Hello? Hello? There we go. Which one? That one. Hi. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all together to commemorate the graduation of Arizona Christian University's Class of 2022. We know that it is only through your grace and providence that we've all made it through the last four years. Lord, thank you for providing a university that would not only grow us in knowledge, but in faith, love, patience, and wisdom. You have provided every student here with a community that seeks to always put you first. It is only through building our lives on your firm foundation that we have come to this point today. Lord, you have a plan for each and every graduate here. So as we leave ACU in pursuit of our respective vocations, let us not forget our true purpose in life. You have called us all to make a difference in the world through exemplifying your love to those around us. Help us to lead lives of holiness and transformation through the power of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us the strength and courage to follow the Great Commission and make disciples of all nations. As we go forth from ACU, let our hearts desire to be to seek you above all else. Lord, I ask that you would bless every student here. I ask that our desire to know you deeper and to teach others about you would ignite a great awakening and that your word would spread through the nations like wildfire. It is only through your almighty power that we will see a victory, Lord, and I pray for victory in the life of every student here. I pray all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. the right podium will. <laughs> Romans 12, 2 through 21 reads, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving. The one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute, bless you, bless and do not harm them. Bless you for whoever sneezed out there. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all, if possible, so far as it depends on you. Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You may be seated. Good evening. 
and welcome to Arizona Christian University's 60th commencement ceremony. We celebrate the class of 2022. I am Dr. Edward Clavel, and I'm the Dean of Academic Affairs. We are so thankful to be gathered outdoors today. It's a beautiful evening, and I see a lot of happy faces out there. Welcome to this dream, this miracle campus that we have. And today is a lot of dreams came true today for grandparents, parents, and graduates. The presence of you here today is a great, shows great support you have for these graduates. Thank you, parents, spouses, extended family, friends, colleagues, for all you have done to support your graduate financially, emotionally, and through prayer. Arizona Christian University's mission is to provide a biblically integrated liberal arts education equipping graduates to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in all aspects of life as leaders of excellence and influence. Our vision is to educate and equip followers of Christ to transform culture with truth. ACU's biblical foundation and conservative mission and vision are preserved by its governing body, the Arizona Christian University Board of Trustees. ACU trustees give generously of their time, talent, and treasures to bless the students and the community of ACU. Would any members of the board who are here today please stand up? Help me to thank these people. Please rise and remain standing for the singing of the National Anthem and the reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance. These activities are led by ACU graduates, faculty members, some of whom are veterans of U.S. military, whom we recognize today and give our thanks. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join us in singing. The words are in your program and on the screen.
You may be seated. Dr. Mark Benedetto retired in 2017 as the longest serving president in the history of the University of Sioux Falls in South Dakota. 20 years, which is nearly twice as long as I've served at ACU, so that is amazing. And I also have to note his university won the NAIA football championship three times while he was president. So, goals. <laughs> his career in higher education spanned 41 years for seven universities in Ohio, Texas, New Mexico, California, South Dakota, and Arizona. And interestingly, he began his career as a graduate assistant baseball coach and rose steadily through the ranks, first in athletics, then in university administration, and ultimately to a very successful presidency. He holds a bachelor's degree from Texas Wesleyan University, a master's from Kent State, and an educational specialist and doctorate of education from Loma Linda University in California. He and his wife, Gail, who were high school sweethearts, have been married for 45 years and have two adult children and five grandchildren. Dr. Benedetto is a licensed and ordained Southern Baptist minister of the gospel who has shared his faith and life experiences throughout the United States, Canada, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Europe, and South Africa. I met Dr. Benedetto in 2011 when I attended a conference for new Christian college presidents. At that conference, Dr. Benedetto was assigned to be my mentor president. And over the next several years, we visited each other's campus. We had regular calls together, and he taught me a lot. He also tried to help me become a better golfer, but that was less successful. Most of all, he became not just a mentor, but a friend. In 2018, we had this extraordinary opportunity to trade our tiny campus for the one we're sitting and standing on today. And when I began secretly negotiating with the leaders of one of the largest universities in the country, I knew I needed help. And so I invited Mark and Gail to come to Arizona. Having an experienced and successful college president in the room with me during months of negotiations with Arizona State University was critical to our success. Dr. Benedetto served during that year as ACU's chancellor. He had an office on this campus and he was involved in many other elements of our transition to our new home in Glendale. But because all of our negotiations with ASU were happening under non-disclosure agreements, I was never really able to publicly introduce him to our community and to thank him for his role in what he called the magnificent multiplying miracle of our move to Glendale. And so I am delighted that he and Gail are with us tonight and that I can publicly say thank you in front of the last group of students who experienced firsthand the miracle of our move to this new campus. Please join me in welcoming ACU's former chancellor, Dr. Mark Benedetto. Good evening. I'm thrilled to be with you this evening and honored to give the commencement address to the graduating class of 2022. You may not be aware that each year throughout the published world, CNN, National Public Radio, periodicals, they publish the top commencement speeches of the year. You can actually purchase a book that's entitled Great Commencement Speeches of Our Time. Let me share from the outset that the commencement speech that I'm going to give this evening will not be published in any book or garner any national acclaim, not because of lack of depth or importance or sincerity, but because I'm going to do three things that the national news outlets reject. First, I'm going to speak about the Lord Jesus Christ. And second, I'm going to quote scripture. And to all but ensure that my speech never gets published, I'm going to talk directly to you students, to you graduates, and I'm going to talk about you. The short time that I 
spent on campus 13 months working closely and prayerfully with President Munsell encompass some of the very best days of my life. Together, we sense the Lord's leading from start to finish, and we continually saw evidence of the fingerprints of God. I can clearly see the fingerprints of God from this podium tonight. Stephen Curtis Chapman wrote a song a few years ago by that same name. The lyrics state, you are a masterpiece that all creation quietly applauds. And what he's been creating since the first beat of your heart is a living, breathing, priceless work of art. And God's not through with you yet. In fact, he's just getting started. Contrary to popular belief, the word commencement doesn't mean the end of something. Rather, the word means the beginning of something. A commencement is the act of blazing a new trail, starting anew. In fact, any action that begins has a moment of commencement. Graduates, let me be the first to congratulate you on your commencement, your new beginning, your new trail. And allow me to remind you that your faculty and staff at Arizona Christian know this so well, as well as your family and friends, that God is not finished with you yet. He's only just beginning. One of the most impactful teaching lessons that you have received at Arizona Christian is the provision to live a life that is outside the realm of normal. And especially during these uncertain, crazy times, that we're living in. This instruction is much needed, and it's a much needed blessing, because normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. I often get a laugh from a question that a restaurant server will ask me when I'm out to dinner. After a considerable waiting period, reading the menu, doing my best to suppress my hunger, the waiter usually will come by and ask me a question, are you ready to place your order? Now, if you think about it, there's probably no other question on earth that's ever been asked that has a more positive uh, rate of return than this one. Of course, there could be a few grouchy people or hangry people who might respond, uh, by saying I need more time before I order the food I'm going to eat. But 99.999% of the world's population says, yes, I'm ready to order. And then while you're in the middle of eating your meal, the server will come by and ask you a couple meaningless questions. How are you doing? How's your food? Is there anything else I can get for you? Most people, if you're like me, we don't even look up when we hear those questions. We just keep eating. But lately, I've tried to have a little bit more fun with this moment, especially if the food is over the top delicious, because my son is an executive chef for a trade. So I often enthusiastically respond to the server's question, can I get you something else? With a one word answer. I look the person in the eye and I just say, more. <laughs> Students, graduates, I would encourage you to try it sometimes. You won't believe how contorted the server's face gets when they hear you say that. But just imagine the dynamics for a minute. If I order more, I'm happy because I get to have more food. The server has a story to share with others about my response that isn't normal. The chef who's working in the hot kitchen uh, feels valued and feels good about what he's created and complimented. And the owner makes more money because he just sold another order. Now let me say from the outset that there's always a risk when you generalize a group of students, group of graduates in this case, but I would like to share three things that I observed 
of the class of 2022 while I served during the 13 months helping President Munsell. I consider all three of these things to be fingerprint evidence. First and foremost, it was obvious to me, graduates, that you love the Lord. Now, some people might say, duh. There's millions of college students all around the country that love the Lord. So what's different about Arizona Christian students? What I saw in the short time that I was here is that you seem to love the Lord with more passion than you ever knew you had before or even knew existed within you. As an Italian-American, I know a little bit about passion and hugging and kissing and greeting one another. I saw that on this campus over and over and over again. You love the Lord and you're passionate about it. And you love the Lord on good days, on bad days, and all the days in between. In Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus tells us, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Graduates, if this is a description of the love that you have for the Lord, or if you've witnessed this type of passionate love on this campus, then I would ask you a question. Are you ready to place your order? If so, ask for more. More ways to love the Lord. More ways to love your neighbor. More ways to love than you've ever even thought possible or even knew existed within you. The second fingerprint evidence that I observed is your desire to be at the center of God's will. When I was on campus, I marveled over your ability to transform everyday moments into prayer. I used to walk the campus and nobody knew me, but students would come up and greet me. And some would say, could I pray with you? I'm like, sure, about what? Doesn't matter. Let's just pray about things. It was wonderful. I observed this in you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 through 19 reads, And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all, see to it that no one repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Graduates, if this describes your search for the will of God in your life, or if you've witnessed this on this campus, I would ask you, are you ready to place your order? If so, ask for more. Ask to be more of a prayer warrior than you already are. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand what it means to pray without ceasing and pray for peace. I heard it said one time that when you pray for peace, you don't pray for peace at all costs, but if at all possible. Our world today needs those type of prayers more than ever before. And we need more prayer warriors just like you. Normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. The third fingerprint evidence that I observed is your courageous faith. Some Christian folks live their whole life and never understand that fear and weakness are not a part of their inheritance. On this campus, the term courageously Christian is more, more than just a tagline or a marketing slogan. Joshua 1.19 reads, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God, 
will be with you wherever you go. And 1 Timothy 1.7 reads, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity and fear, but of power and love and self-control. The Bible tells us this is a command of God. My observation of you graduates is that you get this. You get this. I had the opportunity to put this command of God into practice just a couple months after I left Arizona Christian University. During what was supposed to be a routine heart exam, my cardiologist told me that two of my main arteries were blocked beyond repair and they had, the blockage was right near a spot where they called the widow maker. I had never really heard much about that before, but it's self-explanatory. And he told my wife that if Mark had a heart attack, he most likely would not survive it. So we need to do open heart surgery. In my future was a five and a half hour surgery where the doctors explained to me that they were going to crack my chest open spread my ribs with a rib spreader, and then stop both my heart and my lungs and hook me up to a heart machine and a breathing machine. And the one doctor said, other than that, it's pretty routine. I got word to President Munsell that I was gonna be going through this and I got letters and emails and cards from trustees and friends and faculty and I just held those so dear. One trustee in particular, Glenn Dobbs from Spokane, Washington, wrote me a letter and shared a prayer with me that he had written to help him through a similar health challenge. And in the letter, he encouraged me to write my own prayer, my own version, and to read it often and to memorize it. I took Glenn's advice and I prayed my new prayer several times a day. It was a prayer that I wrote for my situation. I would often rise before sunrise in the morning, walk out into my yard, and as the sun was coming up, I would be reciting this prayer over and over. By the morning of my surgery, I had said the prayer hundreds of times and memorized it. And I could tell you that any sense of fear that I would have expected to experience as I was about to face this type of serious medical challenge melted away on the operating table. Thanks to the Lord's word first, along with my observation of the students that are before me who showed me courageous faith and the support that I received from the ACU community, my spirit was strong and courageous. And I headed into the sur surgical procedure with a spirit of power and love and self-control. And I was prayed up. Graduates, if you find that this biblically-based courage that I've spoken about lives within you, then I would ask you a question, the third and final question. Are you ready to place your order? If you are, ask for more. As you leave this sacred place, you'll be challenged and tested. You may even have your life turned upside down by an unexpected medical diagnosis. In the days ahead, you will undoubtedly need more strength and more courage. Across the globe today, there's nearly 8 billion people, the majority of which would think it is wrong to ask God for more. Yet scripture tells us when it comes to the blessings that the Lord has in store for us, it is not only okay to ask for more, he commands us to do so. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus tells us through his parables that he not only provides life and not only provides abundant life, but the scripture says more abundant life as if abundant life is not enough. He provides more abundant life. My observation of Arizona Christian University graduates is that you get the fact 
that God's word defines a spiritual abundance, not material. The abundance is about growing in grace to the point of your perspective on life is revolutionized. It's not about things. You know that. Just as we become new creations when we come to Christ, so must our understanding of abundance be transformed. What awaits you when you leave this field today is a life overflowing beyond measure. Graduates, my prayer for you as you leave Arizona Christian and commence your new life is that you will receive more blessings from the Lord. I would encourage you to place your order for a life that is outside the realm of normal. And may the Lord give you wisdom and confidence and obedience to ask for more. More of what the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit has in store for all of you. Congratulations. Will the candidates for graduation please rise? Look around, take it in, enjoy it. President Munsell, Ms. Ellison, the faculty and I have the pleasure of certifying that the members of Arizona Christian University class of 2022 as listed in the program has satisfactorily completed the requirements for their respective degree programs and we recommend them to the Board of Trustees for graduation. Good evening, class of 2022. <laughs> By the authority of the Articles of Incorporation of Arizona Christian University, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degrees recommended by the faculty with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, graduates. We will now begin the awarding of the degrees. Department of Biblical and Theological Studies. Bachelor of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. Jacob Contreras. <laughs> Celine Arona. <laughs> Cody Dehart. Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Derek Bester, Summa Cum Laude. Bachelor of Science in Christian Ministries, Jamel Green.
Bachelor of Science in Christian Ministries, Interdisciplinary Studies. Vicki Straw. Yeah. Magna Cum Laude. Roy Olmsted, summa cum laude. Joshua Black, cum laude. Robert Wilson. Sergio Hegarty. Shelley Roden, School of Education, Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education. Melissa Gonzalez, Magnum Cum Laude. Caitlin Patterson, cum laude. Miracle Williams, cum laude. Stacy Busman. Stephanie Ubeta, Ubeta, Magnum Cum Laude. Grace Rushing. Madison Carley, Cum Laude. Jade Phillips, summa cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Measle, summa cum laude. <laughs> Riley Long. Bania Buckley. <laughs> Jennifer Valencia, summa cum laude. Spencer Davis. Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education, Caleb Baker. Yeah, Bernie Garza, summa cum laude. Frankie Gonzalez. Paul Dozman.
Isaac Souza. Grant Warjanowski. Maverick Williams. Troy Osteroy. In the School of Arts, Sciences and Humanities with a Bachelor of Arts in Behavioral Health, Madison LaPierre. <laughs> Rachel Coleman. <laughs> Hannah Bowen. Nahi Lopez Hernandez, magna cum laude. Hope Devalos. <laughs> Sarai Torres Brechera. Sarah Raylene Reyes. <laughs> Elsie Guzman. Brooke Polite. Dante Sewell. Isaac Elias. Samuel Sanchez. Jaden Andrus. <laughs> Taylor Vu. Amber Stekma, summa cum laude. Isaiah Arriaga. Summa cum laude. Sophie Henze. <laughs> Dawson Landers. Bachelor of Science in Biology, Brett Wagner. Robert Campillo, summa cum laude.
Xavier Watkins, cum laude. Katrina Viard, magna cum laude. Bibiana Acosta. <laughs> Analicia Rodriguez. <laughs> Valeria Silva. Michelle Gonzalez, cum laude. Molly Edwards. From the School of Arts, Sciences, and Humanities, BS in Interdisciplinary Studies, Angela Shorter Kinney. With a BS in biology, Samantha Salem, cum laude. Kenzie Markley. With a BS in interdisciplinary studies, Jacob Vieta. With a BS in biology, Austin Crable, magna cum laude. With the Bachelor of Arts in Communication Studies, Bridget McBennett, cum laude. Annabelle Camarano. Bachelor of Science in Communication Studies, Nathan Mayfield. With a Bachelor of Arts in Family Studies, Calgary Marsh, magna cum laude. Melanie Saldana, cum laude. Bachelor of Science in Music, Elliot Alexander, magna cum laude. Jonathan Decius. Jasmine Garvin, summa cum laude. With a Bachelor of Science in Political Science, Tristan Waring. Ryan Vanderwerf. Malik Patterson. Daniel Ornelas, summa cum laude.
Timothy Williams, summa cum laude. Told you I'd do it, Mom. Joshua Winneborg. Irene Ledesma. Manny Via. Adriana Contreras. Charles Proby. Kirsten Garcia. Haley Gleason, summa cum laude. Brianna Green. With a Bachelor of Science in Psychology, Reed Svensson, magna cum laude. Rachel Day, summa cum laude. Kirsten Shinsky. <laughs> Kayla Furman, summa cum laude. Department of Business Administration with a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration, Brittany, Brittany Reeb. Hey. Brittany. Good. Kenna Levi. Cade Moselle. Good job. Wesley Hunter. This is for a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. William Christensen. Good job. Jonathan Gibbs. <laughs> Summa cum laude. Cade McGee. Good job. Cum laude, Christopher Daniels. Yes. Pleasure to read this. Magna cum laude, Darius Gudo. Right 
Department of Business Administration with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, cum laude, Tristan Barta. Good job. Magna cum laude, Annalise Esparza. Summa cum laude, Jessica Farmer. <laughs> Thomas Cruz. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Cruz. <laughs> Greg Tremble. Get him, Greg. Leroy Washburn. Go get him. Go get him. Summa cum laude, Dilla Sherbing. Good job. Summa cum laude, Rhett Holmes. <laughs> Brock Jerpseth. <laughs> Randon Garrison. Summa cum laude, Curtis Roberts. Magna cum laude, Damian McElroy. This is my guy right here. Graduating with, with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Xavier Rubio. Good job. Good job. Oh, I love this. You didn't have to write that down. Josue Delgadillo. I love that kid. I love that kid. Tucker. Thomas. Ethan Omen. Cum loud, Maxwell Walter. Summa cum laude, Nicholas Cole Ebert. <laughs> Leah Nutoni. <laughs> Emily Vasari. Talia Waters. That's got to do a dance, right? Jaden Muir. <laughs> That's right. Magna Cum Laude, Bailey Slaughter. Leon Olivier. Good job. 
Mo Gonzalez. Jacob Hernandez. Shay Morales. Good job, Devin. Devin Nilsson. Dion Horton. Will the graduates please stand up? You may now move your tassels to the left side. Yeah. Be seated. Let's give it up one more time for our graduates. You did it. Well done. You made it through some very difficult things. Transferring campuses, not an easy thing to do. Surviving COVID, not an easy thing to do. Well done. Well done. So proud of you. You are now like the Apostle Peter. You are out of the boat. And mom and dad want you off the payroll. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the one who got you here. He's the one who helped you persevere through the obstacles. Keep your eyes on him. He is the author and the perfecter of that precious faith that you have. A faith that Jesus says he will work in your life to the finish and he's working it out my hope for you is this that this book would continue to come alive in your life that you would treat this book like a really really good friend a friend that you want to spend a lot of time with that you would allow his spirit to come alive more and more in your life Amen. Well done. You're an amazing group. Let this word change you. Let's pray. Father, we are humbled by your love and your affection for us. You bring joy to our lives. We are nothing without you, Lord. Father, we present to you the class of 2022. They're an amazing group of men and women. They have worked so hard to get here. They have struggled, strained, and they have persevered. They have fought back depression, frustration, discouragement, and all the efforts of the enemy to keep them from being here. They made it, Lord, 
and we are so proud of them, and I know you are too. The work you have done, Lord, is just the beginning. We ask that you would guide and direct them. We ask that you would inspire and motivate them. We ask that you would watch over them and protect them from the evil one. Father, we ask that you would pour out your wisdom, that you would grant them clear direction, that in everything they do, they would see you. They would sense your presence, that you would comfort them in their sorrows, that you would celebrate with them in times of joy, that they would know you are always with them. Father, we ask that you would put purpose into their hearts and minds, that they would know your calling, that they would be moved by your spirit, that you would be a lamp to their feet and a light to their path. Shine over them, fill them with your spirit, bless them with favor and peace. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority now and forever. And everybody said? The Apostle Paul writes in the first chapter of Colossians, God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In him all things hold together. Graduates, you know that we are experiencing in our world today what feels like and what some have even described as a great unraveling. All of the things we've built our civilization around, the centrality of family, faith in God, our civic institutions, belief in the golden rule, they seem to be crumbling before our very eyes. And so our nation, flawed for sure, and yet because even now running just on the fumes of our biblical foundations is still the most prosperous, the most just, the most free, the most virtuous society in the history of the world. But now, it seems to be breaking apart. When you take a civilization that, as President John Quincy Adams once said, combines in one indissoluble bond the principles of civil government and the principles of Christianity, and when you remove the foundation, the one thing that holds all things together, you get what we're experiencing today, an unraveling, a coming apart. Of course, we see that in the research we're doing right here at ACU through the Cultural Research Center, research conducted by the world's foremost Christian researcher, Dr. George Barna. We're seeing levels of hopelessness, anxiety, mental health challenges, addictions, and self-harm unprecedented in our history, in your generation. But these are the direct result of so many in our world who've turned away from the truth. Indeed, today a generation is rising as described in the time of Joshua when there arose a generation that knew not God. You know this because you see it. You see it in your friends, in your families, especially in your generation. Division, conflict, loneliness, disconnection, and isolation. And those pressures were already on the rise when suddenly you had to grapple with a worldwide pandemic. And so I want to especially recognize you who are graduating tonight for this fact, that when many of your peers gave up and dropped out, national college enrollment declined 8% over the last two years. You who have walked across this stage tonight, you persevered. At times over the past few years, you had to deal with levels of isolation and distancing, 
things that are so unnatural because God made us for community and for relationship. Some of you got sick. Some of you were quarantined for a time. If you were quarantined on campus, I hope you at least got a t-shirt. Did anyone get a t-shirt for being quarantined? Yeah, there we go. You finished the race here at ACU and you did so at a university that stayed open and that consistent with our faith and our core commitments promoted individual freedom and responsibility instead of lockdowns and mandates. Not only did you overcome the pandemic, but for many of you, you also overcame this unexpected move to a brand new campus, much larger, some portions older and historic. You overcame constant change on this campus and near this campus. You were patient with us as we learned this new place and its rhythms and its spaces and its possibilities and its plumbing problems. You joined us in this adventure you built community here. You crossed over. You became our very own Joshua generation. You celebrated with us this modern day experience that was an echo of what the people of Israel experienced in the time of Joshua. You saw how God brought us into a land with large flourishing structures that we did not build, into houses filled with all kinds of good things that we did not provide, wells we did not dig, fields we did not plant and you helped us begin to make this place our own. Now, just by graduating, you're in the top third of educational achievement in our nation. And according to the latest numbers, on average, today's college graduate will earn $2.8 million over a lifetime, which is $1.2 million more than a typical high school graduate will earn. So congratulations on that. Thank you for investing in your education here at ACU. It will pay off. But more importantly than any financial return on investment is the spiritual foundation that you've cultivated here at ACU. Learning to think biblically, not just about how to live, but about how to work consistently with your calling. How to take your faith into your career decisions. How to build a family. How to live in community. How to serve and how to treat one another in ways that will lead to flourishing, not just in this life, but in the next. Here at ACU, you've learned to serve and you've learned to lead, and you've learned how to influence your generation with the truths of the gospel, that there is truth, that it's contained in the Bible, and that the Bible tells the greatest love story ever told, the story that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Your generation as you leave here, your generation has questions and you have answers. You understand in ways that your generation needs to hear the value of every human life created in the image of God, something that will become increasingly important in the days ahead. You understand that science, nature, and scripture all agree that we are created male and female. You understand that out of one blood, God created all the races of the earth and that we're all equal in law and in significance to a loving God. You also know that freedom comes with responsibility and that from those who were given much, much will be required. So you are equipped to speak these truths and many more in love, not in judgment to your generation. So you have persevered you have crossed over, you have overcome, and now you are equipped with a light that your generation, which is so lost in many ways, in darkness and in confusion, the light that's needed to bring hope and clarity on the path forward. God has told you that he made you to shine as lights in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. And at ACU, you've been encouraged to be courageous in this culture as you leave here. Do not hide the light of your faith in Christ because it is so needed. Well, today is the 60th commencement ceremony for Arizona Christian University, a school that began in 1960. That same year, 1960, President John F. Kennedy was elected. And in his inaugural address, he said that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans, 
born in this century, and he was referring to the 20th century. And it occurs to me that some of you in the class of 2022 were born not just in a new century, but in a new millennium. And now the torch of leadership is beginning to be passed to you. This is your time. President Kennedy spent his entire inaugural, inaugural address six decades ago making the case for freedom and for our obligation to defend it and to promote it around the world. Advancing freedom is also a core commitment of Arizona Christian University. And decades after Kennedy's speech, President Reagan reminded us that freedom is ever only one generation away from extinction. I trust that you have learned at ACU to be grateful that here in this country, we have been blessed by a level of freedom that should never be taken for granted. Certainly, the people of Iran or China or North Korea and now the Ukraine understand that the freedom to believe in God, to speak freely, to decide how and what you want to do with your life, to live in relative peace and safety, none of these things are a given in this world. And if we love our neighbors as ourselves, it's not enough to simply enjoy the benefits that we have here of freedom to worship and to travel and to work and to live in peace while ignoring our brothers and sisters around the world who have none of those freedoms. And I hope you will remember that as you leave here and begin your careers in this world. At the same time, in recent days, I hope we've all been awakened to how quickly and easily many of our fellow citizens are prepared to sacrifice our religious and economic liberties and freedoms to the false promise of safety and security. I love that being here on this campus in Glendale, a training ground for those who fought for freedom against tyranny during World War II, reminds us every day that we must be willing to fight for freedom. So class of 2022, your time has come. You are needed as part of our growing firestorm family of alumni committed to transforming culture with truth. You are needed now as leaders of influence and excellence in our culture. You have proven that you are overcomers. You are confident, you are equipped, you are prepared to serve your generation, speaking the truth in love courageously, pointing your peers toward the only thing that can provide reassurance and hope in the midst of the chaos and confusion of this world, the one person in whom all things hold together. In him, all things hold together. You have answers to this great unraveling. You can bring hope, and you're a voice for restoration, rebuilding, and awakening. Through him, in whom all things hold together. So I want you to take to heart these words from the prophet Isaiah, that those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will restore the streets and the cities in which to dwell. Your time has come. Arizona Christian University Firestorm, class of 2022, we believe in you and we expect great things. Congratulations and Godspeed. I'll do my best to keep this short, but it is my honor to pray and give a short blessing to my class. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day that you have made and a day for celebration at that. Thank you for the fact that we've made it this far and that you'll carry us further to work in your kingdom and that by your will, this place will send others after us to do the same. Thank you for the fact that you carried this graduating class through a campus move a worldwide pandemic and global conflicts to spare. And we ask that you would allow us to work for you in the midst of all these things. God, thank you for the crazy people here, for the fun people here, the supportive, enduring, loving, and biblically focused people here at this university. And thank you for 
having granted us a way to advance your kingdom and ourselves. We ask that you would remind us of the mayhem, good and bad, that you have grown us through at this place, and that you would grant us wisdom to push through into the next steps of our lives. We know that you've purposed us individually and collectively. May we be ready to represent you as we take our first graduated steps off this field and campus. In all things, you are to be praised, and so we undoubtedly celebrate to the greatest degree today, but may we remember your love, your mercy, your sacrifice that has made this all possible. Please grant us safe nights, safe journeys, safe reunions, and of course, safe celebrations. Amen. In the pastoral words of Hebrews 13, my friends, may the God of peace who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Celebrate and party safely, my friends. Class of 22, congratulations.